algebra students wanted to do this problem with you because a lot of students tell me well I need to know fractions for the GED test there's so many fractions on the math test and I say well yeah but that's not the skill being tested in this problem in fact you don't really need to know anything about fractions to solve this equation this sucker here is here to test your algebra okay i'm going to show you what i mean so let's go ahead and take a look it says solve three fourths is equal to a negative one eighths n plus five sixths now i said here that the skill being tested wasn't really fractions it was algebra i've been told to solve here which means they're asking me to find out what n should be equal to and in order to do that to know what n is or what n equals i need n to be alone on one side of the equals sign okay so i'm going to do what i usually do like this trick draw a little line down my equal sign so i can see the visual difference between the left hand side and the right hand side and that leads me to see that here's n over here on my right hand side and my goal is to get n alone. Now there's a couple of numbers to move. So remember, when we're moving things back and forth across that equal sign, we need to work the order of operations backwards because we're doing things, everything opposite, opposite sign, opposite order of operations, okay? So anything that's adding or subtracting with n needs to go first. Now. Another reason I love this problem, students aren't sure what numbers are adding or subtracting. They say, well, Kate, that one's subtracting and that one's adding. And I say, well, yeah, but don't miss that I said with N. What's it doing with N? So I agree with you that 5 6 is adding with N because see how that plus sign is between N and 5 6? But 1 8 is not subtracting with n look at how this number this whole thing is shoved up against n with nothing between the number and n those two things are shoved together they're actually multiplying okay so let's just take notes of what we're saying here since i'm talking a lot so this negative one eighths is multiplying and this five six that's adding okay so we said we would get rid of anything adding or subtracting first okay so i'm going to get rid of the five sixths now, how am I going to get rid of the 5 6 By doing the opposite, the opposite of what it's doing. So it's adding, so I will subtract, okay? Now, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So guys, travel, get all the way across the equal sign. It's not just like I write minus negative 5 6 anywhere randomly, okay? I do it to both sides, which means I get all the way across the equal sign to that other side. Another reason I like that line to help us organize our work okay let's see what our new equation will be and now you say kate i told you i had to learn fractions i told you and i say no you don't when you're solving equations on the ged you get a calculator your calculator can do fractions okay so this entire ugly nasty three quarters minus five six i can do in my calculator uh, what you need is the n over d button and I highly recommend that you're in math print whenever you work with fractions. You can learn how to do both of those things from scratch in the calc videos, but I'm just going to assume you've already done those. So I will hit my N over D button. I will type three fourths and ooh, typo. And from that, I will subtract N over D again to subtract five sixths. And look, my calculator told me that was negative one twelfth. Okay. The calculator does the fractions. You, you do the algebra. It is your job to not get intimidated by the fractions and lose focus, but focus on that idea of using opposites to get a letter alone. Okay, so that was that left-hand side. Now, how about that ugly right-hand side? Well, guys, adding and subtracting are opposites. So adding 5, 6 and subtracting 5, 6, that's going to zero out. It might be an ugly number, but I still used opposites. It'll still cancel. So what's left? That's what's left. Negative one eighth n. And you guys are like, oh my gosh, this is so scary. I don't know what to do. So there's actually a, a nice little trick that you'll learn, um, especially if you go on to college algebra, about multiplying with a reciprocal. But I'm just going to stick with this idea that 
we can always use opposites. Okay, so I like it when we only have to memorize one rule. Okay, so I want n alone. Right now, n is not alone because of this number. And what did we say that this number was doing with n? Well, we said it was multiplying. So if we want to get rid of it, one guaranteed way to do that is to do the opposite of multiplying. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. But remember, you need to divide by exactly what you want to get rid of. So what do I want to get rid of? Well, I want to get rid of negative one-eighths. So I'll divide by that. Now, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'll divide that side by negative one-eighth. And again, you know, my students won't panic necessarily on this left-hand side, although you might, it looks ugly enough. But multiplying by negative one-eighths and dividing by negative one-eighths are opposites. They'll cancel, so the right-hand side's not that messy. But oh my gosh, this looks gross. Now, if you know how to multiply fractions by hand, divide fractions by hand, um, good for you. Go ahead and do it. It's probably even actually faster. But for those of us who are just really focused on that algebra, trying to get past this test, uh, again, I'm just going to do this in my, in my calculator. But what I suggest you do so you don't get confused is just do negative one twelfths divided by negative one eighths, and that will help you to keep this straight. So I'll go negative and over D button to type in one twelfth arrow out of the fraction to type divide and then negative again and over D to get one eighth. And my calculator figured out that was two thirds. So what is n equal to? Two thirds. Now, you know, guys, this problem was complex enough, like it had enough going on that you might want to check your answer, right? We had calculator gymnastics, we had negative numbers, we had all kinds of signs. So you say, well, how do I check my answer? Well, you just take the side the letter was on and try this solution that you just got and see if it gives you the answer, the thing on the other side of the equal sign, that you were expecting. So let's try it. Let's see if I take negative one eighths of this answer, two thirds, and add five sixths to it. Again, I'm just copying this right hand side, guys, changing n into my possible solution. Let's see if it does give me three fourths. And again, you don't have to know it by hand. You can type it into your calculator. So negative one eighth, come out of the fraction, times n over d, two thirds, close it, plus fraction five sixths. And did I get a correct answer? Yeah, I did. It came to three fourths. So all that to say, what's the solution? Two thirds is the solution. Two thirds made this equation true. All right. Oof tricky. If you have any questions about this, make sure you post it to our Facebook group. Otherwise, happy learning.